in. So just getting started. So I'm sure people will join us here in a minute. Hey German, good to see you. Hi there. Hi, how's everyone doing? Alright. Yay! Thanks for joining. Good to see you. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Is that Ellie? Hi Ellie. Are you in Brazil? Hello from Brazil. Yay. I'm playing, um, this is a Professor Jones recommendation, La Paranda, by Kazubi, if I even said that right. <laughs> so, we're going to wait for Professor Jones to join us, she's going to log in, and, um, oh, I had to show off my new earrings. Hi, Chelsea! I gave a shout out to my friend, uh, Holly, these were the best birthday gift, so, <laughs> good to see you guys. All right, so we're just going to wait for Professor Joan to join us. Um, it's been a bit gloomy here in Dallas the past week. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. I kicked the table with Minnie. <laughs> so um, I'm just, you know, I need bright, sunny weather. So, I mean, I love the cooler temperatures. I like that we're now transitioning into fall. But, yeah, oh, my goodness. <sighs> I need some, I need some sun. <laughs> So it's, I figured I'd wear a bright color today just to kind of brighten the mood and so there we go. There's Chelsea. Good to see you. All right. So we're going to see if uh, Professor Joan is going to join us. Um, she and I have uh, really, and there's like a whole group of us, we've really just kind of bonded and um, talking to each other through this pandemic and I wanted to maybe do like an interview style and talk to her. Of course, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And there's a lot of events coming up uh, throughout the rest of Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, in fact, I believe I'm doing an event um, next Thursday on October 1st, uh, where they, it's called TED Circles. Uh, there's Kim. Good to see you. And um, so there, and then we'll have some other events coming up as well. We're going to have Professor Marion LaFeld on at some point in mid-October. And then, of course, we have uh, to get ready for Day of the Dead. And I actually went and started buying products. I made a Target run. <laughs> Don't tell my boyfriend I made a Target run. Um, look what I found. I just love that we can find all this cute stuff. Uh, at Target, so I thought I'd show you some of the things I got. Let's see. Um, okay, I'm keeping an eye out for Professor Joan, so whenever Joan is ready, look at this one. This is too cute. Target, those little birds that they do. So that's definitely going on the altar. She's wearing her little outfit. She's got a little sugar skull mask. And let's see, what else do I have? They also sell Oh, and I got this one too. This is too cute. Look at that guy. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Isn't that adorable? So every year I buy a couple more things from my altar. And they are definitely going on there. So there we go. Hi, Lola's Casino. Thank you for joining us. And let's see. Keeping an eye out for Joan. She should be joining us here in just a minute. I'm just showing some of the Day of the Dead stuff I got at um, Target. I love that they sell already a pre-made Nicho. I've been watching some DIYs on how to make my own. And um, I think I might use this one for my dad. Um, I also have an aunt that passed away this year, so I want to add her to the altar. And you know, we've, had, we've lost a few people at, um, at the Richland campus, and if you've lost someone, I always like to make sure we honor so many of the people that we've lost for Day of the Dead. And um, I'm thinking maybe we need to do something special for all of the COVID. Uh, 200,000 now, as of um, Sunday, I believe, have passed away. So that's just, that's a lot. That's a lot to process. I mean, that's bigger than a, a stadium. Uh, probably two stadiums combined, or even four. I'm not even sure. Uh, don't ask me about math. Um, <laughs> so let's see if uh, there's Joan. She's on, and let's see if she gets the request. And then we can start talking to Joan. We've been playing some punta music, and I've been seeing on the video, she sent me a couple of videos that it looks like quite the workout. So I'm excited. So. Let's see, I think, Joan, if you see the request, you just hit request, and it will bring you, let's see, give us just a second, we will get our technical issues resolved. 
And of course, I'm trying to think about how I can safely, there it is, go live. There we are. Okay, so we're about to have Joan join us. And she's connecting. There she is! Hi, Joan! <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Can you hear me? Let me turn up my volume. Oh, yes. There we go. There we go. I was, I was tutoring and a student showed up like at 1.50. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't let her go. I, I had to help her. <laughs> oh, no. I, and I love that. You, of course, students come first, so that's totally yeah. fine. I was just showing them the stuff. I, I made a Target run. I got oh, some. My, that's so adorable. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and, of course, I had to get a – and they had a cat one. I was going to get one for you, but if you go to Target. That is so they have, cute. They have a cat. I had to get the doggy. <laughs> So, baby, you. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, and they even make like pre-made uh, nichos so I can um, fill it. That is very cute. So what do you exactly. fill it Exactly. Huh? What do you fill um, it Well, I I look on Pinterest. You can do whatever. You could honor um, like a celebrity. You could honor a loved one. That's I might so maybe sweet. do it for my Aunt Mary. Remember she passed this year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe make that I, for her. But I, I also want to make them. Uh, what? I'll look into that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you some links. And um, the, you can make them easily with cereal boxes and stuff. And I have a bunch because I was a teenager. <laughs> so that's, a, that's the next project. So how are you? I'm so glad you joined us. Yes, me too. I'm very excited. This is my first live. So I'm like, oh, I hope this works. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You look, And I love, I always love her hair. I'm, and I'm one of the people I want to touch. I want to touch hair. <laughs> That's okay. When we come back, you can. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I know. I know you're not supposed to touch hair, but I'm. But people touch my hair too. I'll stand in line and I'll feel someone just doing this, and I'm like, oh, is he safe? Yes. <laughs> oh, just ask. That's all I say. Just ask first. <laughs> it's exactly. so weird when it happens. I know. It's it's funny. Yeah. See, <laughs> Joan's hair is my favorite. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Your hair should have its own Instagram following. Hi, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> all righty well i was playing a little bit of um the music you suggested and you i heard you say it was quite it looks like quite a workout yes it is it is okay you will burn a lot of calories and <laughs> you will tone up very quickly <laughs> oh my goodness so when we get back to campus we'll have to do like a punta contest or something <laughs> like who can last woman standing yes. <laughs> last man standing <laughs> Oh. Yeah, if I if I overthink it, then I can't do it. I have to kind of like just oh sort of go with the flow and then I catch it. But as soon as I start thinking, it all falls apart. <laughs> yeah, well, tequila fixes that for me. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just take a drink of something and then. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally, totally. All right. Well, I am so appreciative. I know this is a little bit out of your comfort zone, but I'm so Thankful that you could be on our Instagram Live, and I know our students miss you, miss us. Yes, I miss the students. Oh, yeah. It's, I just miss the, the noises in the hallway, yes. the conversations. Yes, I, I was supposed to be on campus this week. Um, mm -hmm. I'm home today, but when I'm there, it's very quiet, and it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. But I do miss the students. And the, yeah. the noise, the happy noises outside. Exactly. I even miss going out and shushing them outside my office. Like, Be quiet. Keep it down. <laughs> yeah. It's become like a hall monitor, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. All righty. Well, uh, I thought we'd just do this kind of casual. Just I, I came up with some questions, and I asked some of the all students to contribute. Yeah. Just to, just to kind of get to know you and whatever you're comfortable sharing, you know. Totally. It's not, a, it's not like um, – confess all kind of <laughs> uh, like those talk shows from the from the 80s and the 90s yeah <laughs> Maury Povich or whatever you know. Sally Jesse <laughs> yes yes you are not the father <laughs> no we're not gonna do that okay so just to introduce people that, that don't know you um, so tell us so go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us like maybe where you were born or a little bit about your background how you grew up whatever you want to share with the students yeah, I've, um, I, like I tell people now, I'm a New Yorker living in Dallas. <laughs> mm. I was born in Dallas, I mean, in, in New York, um, 
born in New York, and then when I, after college, I moved to New Jersey. And I was there for about 10 years working. Um, and then I made my way across the South. I just realized, so in, mm -hmm. in kind of thinking about what to say, I realized yeah. I've been in the South for 10 years. Oh, wow. So Isn't that you're almost a, you're almost a native southerner. <laughs> That's so wild. <laughs> so yeah, born uh born in um in New York in the Bronx. And the then Bronx. Yeah, raised in Brooklyn, uh then Queens, then back to the Bronx. Wow. Uh, Isn't the RBG Bronx. from the Bronx too? Is she? She Ruth probably Bader is. And that's what she had in common with uh, the notorious BIG that they were both. <laughs> So now another six degrees of separation. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I should have known yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I only because I watched a documentary the other day about her. And, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, was... grew up all over New York and uh, went out to college at LaGuardia Community College out in Queens. Oh, wow. A great little, co not a great little, it's a great big old community college. And then mm -hmm. I went to, uh, uh, I went out to Long Island, which to me seemed like a world away, <laughs> but it's really just like an hour on the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you're out in the woods and it's, out, you know, it's university. And, mm -hmm. um, and once I graduated, I just moved to New Jersey because my mom moved out there and family was out there. And Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so sometimes I make jokes about New Jersey in my history class. Is it? Does it kind of live up to the hype of the jokes of like living in New Jersey, people trying to escape Jersey? I'm just because <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, no, I've only she... been up there a couple of times in my life, so what are what are the jokes? Um, you know that Jersey is just kind of the wannabe of New York, and that you know, like, kind of like living in Beirut. And I, I know these are hard, but these are movie references that yes, make yes. fun of Jersey. And when I cover the thirteen colonies, I'm like, ah, I don't know a lot about the Jersey colony. Does anyone care about Jersey? And everyone laughs, even my New Yorker students. And yeah, <laughs> I think so Kim's so like I, it's true. Yeah, Kim is like it's true. So the New Yorker in me wants to say, yeah, nobody cares about New Jersey. But <laughs> I've been there long enough to say, no, Jer New Jersey has its culture and it's right. valid and it's yes. it's a it's a. I like New Jersey. It grew on me. Um, okay. Very different from New York, but in a lot of ways not different. They, there are a lot mm -hmm. of similarities. Um, so yeah, New Jersey was awesome. Well, that's good. And yeah. I've, I've learned to appreciate more because my boyfriend watches a lot of cooking shows. Yes. And so we're always looking at, like, best places to eat in New York and New Jersey. And so he's like, we have to go. And I'm like, okay, I will go for the food for sure. Yes, the food the in New the Jersey food. is excellent. Yeah. I don't know if Kim – I know Kim's out in New Jersey. I don't know if she's ventured out, but the food is <laughs> – She'll have to report back. Yes, 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 so. yes. Okay, yeah. cool. But Jersey yeah. was – Jersey was good? Yeah, Jersey was good. Okay. I, I um in New Jersey, I worked with um I lived in a densely populated um part of New Jersey, northern New Jersey, heavily mm -hmm. heavily Latino. Okay. Yeah. So all of the students that I was working with, they were all kinds of uh, Latino students, born here or immigrated here, young mm -hmm. and old, documented, undocumented, all of them trying to get their degrees. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So and was, what um, what different countries were they representing? Everywhere. I mean, Everything? same thing in New York. It's like all of Latin America was in New York and New Jersey. You could oh, go really? to a Peruvian restaurant, Ecuadorian, oh, nice. Argentinian, Colombian. You know the usual suspects: Puerto Rican, Colombian, yes, um, yes, Dominican. But like everybody, Mexico. I mean, everybody was. Oh wow! Okay. Was, it was, okay, it was so, really, really um, I miss them. It, there's mm -hmm. something about them, like, trying to really, you know, juggle work and school and really just working hard. It just, it, it was really sweet to work with all of them. So oh, I miss that. Yeah. Yes. Well, I understand you have quite a following here as well with your students. They adore you. They love you. So when they heard you were on, and I think... Yeah, one of your students is on here. And um, for those of you watching, if you have a question or comment, feel free to put it in the comments, and I'll, I'll be checking the feed. So if there's a specific question you want to know about, yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll keep an eye out. So, all right. Um, so 
grew up in New York, a um, little bit in New Jersey. Um, how would you kind of identify yourself in terms of ethnicity? I mean, I don't want to say the, like, what are you? As we yeah, yeah, asked. yeah. So I, I always like, what is your, like, ethnic background or your yeah. ancestral background, however you want to approach that question? <laughs> so I, 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 I saw a bag in um, Five Below that it's like a little tote, and it says, uh -huh. I'm, I'm from here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I've been tinkering with um, when people ask, and I've already been asked this um, in some other things that I'm doing. Uh, I say I'm a multi-ethnic Latina. And when I, I love say that. that, yeah, people go, go, what? And so I think it opens up conversation. So I'm like, I'm a multi-ethnic Latina with um, uh, uh, ancestry that's Native American, African, and uh, Spanish by way oh, of Honduras, okay. El Salvador, the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. I was born here. I'm American. I'm a New Yorker. I, like, I throw everything at them. <laughs> I think that by the time I'm done, they're like, oh, God. <laughs> I know. I, I had a guy tell me once, you were just every ethnicity. And I'm like, thank you. Okay, I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, think, I think for me, I was the one thing that I've learned leaving New York is that people don't understand uh, what is Latinx or Latinidad. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I, I think there's so many different ways to express it. But for me, it just seemed to, when I say multi-ethnic Latina, it got like, like people, it lands somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, because I think sometimes the labels put you in a box. And this really kind do. of, yeah, it kind of gives you space to kind of talk about what that means. And I don't want to take up space. Like I, and my Native American, there are Native American communities, indigenous communities that are living Absolutely. now, and I don't want to take up their their space, and I don't want to do the same for our, our Black Latinos, you know, so I'm like, okay, multi-ethnic Latina, let's talk about what that is. I like that, because there is definitely Choctaw Indian in my family, but I certainly didn't wouldn't want to appropriate a culture that I'm, right. I'm maybe a, a quarter of that, you yeah. know. But I just yeah. only want to respect those that are, and so yeah, I like that. I'm gonna, I might have to steal that from you, multi ethnic. Yeah, I'm kind of tinkering with it, and I'm, and I'm like, it's in our DNA. It's part of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I love having these conversations. So if it, if it can spark a conversation, then let's have exactly. it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, then usually if, if you give a little bit broader answer, then they want to get to know a little bit more. So I, I usually get the comeback of, well, you don't look Mexican. And I say, well, you know, my ancestors are from Spain, and some came to Mexico, some married other Spaniards, others did not, you know. But what does that mean, you don't look Mexican? I know. And, um, and I struggled with that for years because um, – and I saw it, especially when I actually went to California, I was there at Pepperdine as a guest professor. And, you know, every, the Latinos that I saw were very dark skinned, most that I saw in the day to day. And so when people would say that to me, I'm like, okay, so you're comparing me to what you see around you. Yes. But that is not a representation of everybody in the community. Yeah, which is why I like saying multi-ethnic. Mm -hmm. Because it it's, gives space for everybody. And then we could have that conversation where, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't know what you didn't know. So let exactly. me give you a piece. And I think it leaves people open to the idea that maybe in the future they'll learn something else. They'll come across another Latino that will mm -hmm. open up a whole other aspect of Latinidad. So it's Absolutely. just this whole thing about being put in a box. Exactly. It's not... Oh, it's so frustrating. And I, I've been more comfortable identifying as saying that I'm fourth generation Latina because <laughs> the, you know the, that seems to, seems to also kind of say, okay, I'm I'm I've been here, but you know, there's other aspects to my background. And yes. it's not just that because there is German and there is Indian, yes. and so it's yeah, yeah. And I, it's funny because when I talk about what I'm experiencing here and the people that I'm meeting here. Mm -hmm. back home they're like oh Mexicans have been there for four generations and I'm like yes I think we've <laughs> forgotten our history <laughs> like, exactly we forgot what we were taught in school. before 1848 this was Mexico yes like, yes and so people are like oh yeah that's right and I'm like yeah. 
<laughs> I, Did I ever tell you? I had a great grandmother that to her dying day refused to walk into the Alamo because she was upset. She's like, this was Mexico. So <laughs> that's <laughs> awful. Yeah, she stood by that. So yeah. now I did see a question pop up actually from Lola. Uh, hi, Lola. Hi, um, Lola. It's so great she joined us. Um, she asked, "What did you study and what do you teach?" And oh, so I have a BA in um, religious studies. And oh, wow. I didn't know that. Very yeah, cool. and not not like to proselytize or anything like that. It was just like studying world religions and. I, we are like a kindred spirit. I was the same way. I took a world studies, world religion class, but I, yeah. didn't, I didn't major. Yeah, because, yeah, you want to know. Yeah. And, I wanted to know who is God and, mm -hmm. you know, does he really exist? Is it a she? Um, yeah. You know, what does the world say about God? So I, had, I was really curious about all of that. Uh, my mom was not happy about my degree. <laughs> She's like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, my poor father, too. What are you yeah. going to do with a philosophy degree? <laughs> yes. She, she was like, please, okay, fine. If not, don't do philosophy. I can wrap my head around religion, but... Uh, yeah. I got a call from mm -hmm. New Jersey. Um, and then I got an <laughs> MA in um, urban education. So an, an MA wow. in urban education to teach uh, ESOL. Yeah. Very cool. And that's what you do now at, at Richland, at the Richland campus. Now, yes, yeah. Although I, I'm trying to see if I can get um, swing. You need 18 graduate credits to teach, like, uh, a religion course at, on campus. So mm -hmm. i got to figure out how to do that because that would be really awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you do. And I'm kind of in the same boat because I've taught Mexican history but you have to have the credits, so I'm tempted to go back just to get enough to teach. Because I've done, like, Chicano history, Chicano studies. Yeah. Um, but then it's, like, ugh, another, it's, like, one more thing on my list, but I'll get to it at some point. I know. We'll get to it at some point. But, yeah, that's what <laughs> I I got okay. the degree. I got the degree in, in ESOL because I wanted to really, um, I wanted to give back to the community. So teaching English mm -hmm. was, I think, a way to help because so many people uh, back in New Jersey and New York really wanted to learn English mm -hmm. just to get their foot in the door um, and right. be able to understand what was happening at, happening at work and maybe get a bump in their pay rate. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought, let me, let me teach English. And it's always a blast when I teach and my students come from Honduras they're like, you're oh. from Honduras. Oh, my God. Very <laughs> and they cool. love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so what is your favorite part of teaching ESOL? Like, what, what is your takeaway? Like, at the end of the semester, what is the thing that you're like, oh, my gosh, that's why I do this? I think it's the students that, that improve. When you see a student improve, and they all improve in mm -hmm. one way or another, I think, I think you would say the same thing, um, mm -hmm. Michelle, that if it's not the language, they improve in some other area, they walk away right. kind of being challenged enough that they see the world just a little differently, and they see themselves in a much better light, they're more confident, Absolutely. and that is the stuff that I just love. I think that's, yes. is that Claudia, represent Claudia? <laughs> yes, I saw that, yes, represent. <laughs> And there is, there's something, especially, um, and I've seen it with, like, my Vietnamese students when I talk about going to Vietnam, and they light up to, to yeah. have someone that knows even just a little bit about their home country, and I know they're here, and they're homesick, and I have such an admiration for someone that packs up their life and goes to yes. another country. Oh, my God, yes. You know, yeah, and that's, yeah, I don't that's know how Claudia does it, because I need my mom, even when we're fighting and whatever, I need to go see her and yes. have her cook for me, and... <laughs> <laughs> um that's that's rough you know yeah and I think of all the students the ones that are like the ones that were undocumented and couldn't go back home to see yes. their, their family it was just mm -hmm. you know and I knew so many people that were like that that couldn't see their mother for like yes. 10 15 20 years mm -hmm. and that's you know that's why I was like I need to give back to the community they need somebody that looks like them Mm -hmm. um, my Spanish is strong enough that, you know, right. I could communicate. And it's just, I, that was really the big takeaway, like, to see them change, evolve. You know, when a student comes back and gets a scholarship or gets a job, 
Yes. Oh, amazing. And oh. I've had other students that by the end of the semester, they might leave an unhappy, violent marriage. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, That's things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that will suddenly, I remember I had a student that came in. She was so quiet and so, um, like, submissive. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the semester, no, the following semester, she showed up to the tutoring center where I was working as an assistant director, and she um, she had a new haircut. She was wearing boots and jeans, blue jeans. Wow. And she was, you know, like t a little Americanized, but very vocal. I don't know what happened from one Good semester to the next, but yeah. something about being in college classes, I think that it really boosted mm -hmm. her her confidence, you know? Absolutely. And, and then when they see others around them. Yes. Yeah. No longer shy, no longer submissive. So when people open up, it just, it mm -hmm. makes the work meaningful. It's like, okay, Absolutely. this is why I do this. Absolutely. Yeah. My favorite is when at the end of the semester, they're like, I had never thought about that or no one taught me that. And I like to add like LBGTQ history. I like to add women's history and I will never forget when I first few years I started teaching, I had a class that was all guys. It was mostly like jock guys. It was a small class. But I taught them women's history. And by the end, <laughs> the the essays and the writing, I turned them all into feminists. It was wonderful. Like, do you understand when I say I'm a feminist and what I'm fighting for? And they're and I are you a feminist? And they're like, Yes. Like, why yeah. wouldn't I want my partner or my mom or my sister or my cousin to not have the same rights as as everyone else and that's when I was like okay <laughs> that's why I'm doing it this is so yeah. worth it yeah yeah no totally <laughs> so all righty well I know we've talked about some of the positives I'm curious um because I asked my students of this as well have you ever faced any direct acts of racism or kind of negative like how have you handled those situations um I don't know. I don't know about direct. Uh, okay. Make I think it more subtle. In the north, it's it's subtle, or it's either that, or you're just so like whatever. Uh, you okay. Keep it moving. So mm -hmm. yeah, I saw that, and I'm like, am I really not remembering? Either my memory's gone. There, I did have experiences where they could be seen as. I had one experience that's very clear in my mind. Mm -hmm. Could be seen as racist or microaggression, okay. but a, a philosophy professor telling me that I didn't belong in his class. So oh I came gosh. into class. I had him freshman year, and he failed me. Oh, he was he was the chair of the department, and he just would pick on all the boys, on all the guys, and ignored everybody else. And um, he failed me, and then I had to take the class again. I passed it. And then senior year, I ended up having to take an honors class philosophy class because it was the only one that fit my schedule I was part-time uh, at work yeah and I walked into class and he looks at me and he goes are you sure you belong here I oh. and I wanted to kill him <laughs> yes oh my god <laughs> and I said is this room you know C101 and he said yes and I said is this honors ethics and he said yes and I said then I belong here Good for and he you. said, see me after class. <laughs> and he still asked to see my schedule. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, you know, that guy, that uh, professor, ended up being a mentor, and he apologized to me. Good for him. Yeah. Wow. He, uh, yeah, that is that. rude, Claudia. It's very yeah, rude. absolutely. Oh, I would have. Um, I took it as, you know, maybe a little sexist, maybe a little racist, you know, philosophy mm -hmm. being the white man's world. Um, but he apologized. <laughs> Good for he said, him. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And I said, yeah, and you yeah. better think twice the next time, you know, a student of color comes into your classroom and you tell them exactly. they don't belong. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, that, I had something similar in high school when I was in uh, marching band. And we were practicing. And, you know, they go through each of the different groups to tune before we start playing. And he said, okay, trumpets play your note, and he makes this face. He's like, oh, my God, you guys sound like a mariachi band. You sound horrible. And it took me, and it's one of those, like, it was delayed. Like, it yeah, ate oh. at me all day. Yes. I go home, I talk to my mom, and she's and she was insulted because she's like, 
remember, Michelle, your your grandfather on like her father played in bars, played in mariachi bands. My uncle at one point played for the uh, symphony in San Antonio. So a lot of it, yeah, is, um, you know, you learn by ear, but it was such a derogatory comment. Yes. Like, why is that a bad thing? So I waited um, because he was a really good band director. And one day uh, he called me to his office. We were talking about something else. And I finally brought it up. And I said, look, you made that comment, and I'm, that was kind of insulting. And I, and I did. I said, my, my uncle is a musician, played in a mariachi band, my, my grand, both my grandfathers. And it, it was to do it in a calm environment and to know that, you know, he could tell I was not okay with it. And yeah. I think that was the first time I actually, like, challenged someone. Uh, but it took me weeks to get to that point. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think for me, I was very lucky to grow up surrounded by so many Latinos and really mm -hmm. not a lot of white people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my white teacher sometimes would say things that I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? You know, um, so not right. like over racist attacks, but definitely mm -hmm. like they're being racist. Um, yeah. But I was protected. A lot of Latinos, a lot of unity, a lot of love. Oh, um I didn't really experience, uh, you grow up with this, the thing that everybody grows up with, which is like the mm -hmm. feeling of like, I'm not American enough and I'm not Latino enough or whatever, right? Oh, that we all have, to a certain yes. degree, right? uh, yeah. to a certain degree. But um, I didn't really experience like direct in your um, racist stuff until I came to the South. Yeah, yeah. And that's when, you know, people were like, you cannot be out after, after a certain hour uh, don't go out past the city limits because, you know, you don't know who you're going to run into. Like, warning me that I'm going to, you know, you need to stay away from Like, that to me was so foreign. Yeah. Um, Have you ever heard of a sundown town? Do you know what a sundown I, town is? Yeah, I did then, you know. <laughs> like, oh, you know, like, you learn about it, but then, like, you actually experience it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Um the first day I went to the state farm, somebody, a, a random white lady, touched my hair uh, while I was online, and I was shocked. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, what are you, why are you touching me? Yes. Um, yes. It's just, like, little things like that. But I think that, you know, it's sad to say, but I think growing up here in the United States as a person of color, you're just, you are swimming in the racism. It might not be um, overt, but you are dealing with it in one way, shape, or form. Yes. Yeah. So. And it's very, and I grew up in Carrollton next to Farmer's Branch, and Farmer's Branch is kind of notorious for their racism, and it, it is, it's this very subtle, but when I go, like, into restaurants, when I go, like, into a store there, it's these looks, it's these subtle, you know, signals that of like, you yes. don't really belong here, and I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And I got that in my program. Uh, I, not that I didn't belong. My program was great for the religious studies um, program. I loved it. Stony Brook mm -hmm. University was amazing. I'd do it all over again. Um, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes the professors, they just don't, they, they don't want to hear you or see you if you're not um, aligning with what they want to teach. So, you know, the right. professors were very clear about what religion is, like what a a real religion is and what a real what other religions are. And I fight with them all the time. Like, Good for you. No, <laughs> you know, exactly. so that to me was just like another thing that you have to like deal with little things like that. And, and then mm -hmm. other things when I worked in corporate, you know, yeah. you knew the space changes when you walk into the room and you mm -hmm. feel it. And, and you have to be ready because somebody's going to say something or do something. Exactly. Well, I got, I, promoted with, I got promoted within three months to supervise the role of a call center. And I heard all the whispers. Oh, yes, you got it because she's the minority because they, they need diversity. And she's a woman. Yeah. And so it was never about my credibility. It was never about my talent in computers. Those were the first two headlines of why I got the job. Yes. Yeah. And then I had to work even harder just to prove that I could handle it. Yeah, yeah, I remember a supervisor saying, so I, I had, um, I, I had, I don't know how to explain this, because my supervisor couldn't even, like, 
there was a clash between myself and a you could say a subordinate even that was kind of weird because she couldn't mm -hmm. she couldn't define the roles which caused the problem um <laughs> and this person complained about me and my supervisor said well you have to understand you know when joan talks to you like that it's because of where she comes from oh my god and i <sighs> what are you I, an orphan from the 20s? I mean, my God. It was just, are you, like, so she's tone policing me. She's um, n totally disregarding, not not even listening to what I'm saying. She's just like, oh, you know, that's just where Joan comes, and where do I come from, New York? You know, what are you trying to say? So it's just, it was really, really weird. I didn't, I didn't challenge it. Uh, mm. I didn't feel like I was in a space to challenge it. I didn't want to even have that conversation. This was a uh, how can I say this? Like when you're in a white space and you're now the power dynamic is more even, mm -hmm. that was new to me. Usually the prof it's a professor mm -hmm. or it's a boss or it's, but in this one, it was, there was more room and I didn't know how much I could, I could push back and not. And so that right. was new for me. Um, now I'm like, okay, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have to advocate for myself. Right. Yes. And, to teach people how not to be uh i don't know if that was racist but definitely definitely not the way to go De to racist least, undertones maybe right to at least speak up and push back and i know for me it took me years you know now that i'm in my 40s yeah i'm like there is something about when you get older <laughs> You just settle in. <laughs> exactly. You know, because, um, and I don't know if you, if your parents did this to you, but my mom was always like, be a good girl, yes. you know, don't step out of line, you know, you're, it, there's something about, not to stereotype, but the, the sense of protection and keeping girls safe. And my mom came from a, a very poor background, a violent background, and so you, her mother instilled so much fear, especially in the girls, like, you don't go out here and you don't do that. And so she was kind of subtly sending that message to me as well and so in my early 20s I didn't want to speak up I kept I was terrified I was gonna get in trouble with my own mom yes but it was something happening at work you know yes. yeah no I totally get that I think it's I I know when you say stereotype but it is a thing on Latino culture right that girls yeah, are yeah, treated I mean, I, differently I don't and... want to generalize a whole but it's it's a common link I see among yeah. the Latinx community Yes. Because uh, I see so many of my Latina students, my female students especially, that are just so timid and quiet. And I'm like, I get where that come from, comes from. Totally. Totally. And, uh, and um, I always say this, and maybe Claudia, you can, if she's still with us, she can, she can vouch for <laughs> it. But in uh, the culture in, in Honduras, the way I was raised and the way a lot of people that I've met, it, mm -hmm. the girls are, you're supposed to be super respect, uh, respectful, especially exactly. to your elders there's a hierarchy, you know, a tia, mm -hmm. a, a older brother, like, you're always yeah. sort of at the bottom, which makes you kind of submissive. And yeah. I'm, I'm really glad to see that that seems to be shifting and changing, like, overall, because I've known mm -hmm. plenty of Latinas that do not, are not submissive <laughs> and do not, no. you know what I mean? I see them on Facebook on the videos, <laughs> and I'm like, you go, you yell at that white lady, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Claudia's saying, yeah, that's true. That's true, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and I and I teach in my history class, you know, for not it, um we talk about uh, in women's history the the notion of the good girl versus the bad girl. And that goes all the way back to, you know, colonial times. Yeah. And that's why when you look at how a man perceives you, if they see you as an easy woman or a bad girl, you know, someone you can run around with, mm -hmm. it's almost like it gives them a license to push yeah boundaries more than so that's why there's this emphasis of be a good girl be obedient be submissive behave um yeah as a way so to protect I, I, you as a way to protect yeah yeah i totally because if, if i'm not engaging and i'm not making eye contact and i'm not you know pushing and if yeah. you speak up you're going to be met with violence so um exactly. that's the other extreme so mm -hmm. but i i feel like something's shifting um there's just, I don't know if it's just the, the, the youth, the, it's just a younger generation. They just seem much more empowered, much more willing to to speak up in ways that I didn't see that 
when I was younger. I agree. And I think the social media has a lot to do with it. They have access. And now that they are actually seeing more representation, whereas we didn't have as much. Yes. And what we did have was kind of stereotyped. Yes. Um, so that to me is encouraging as well. Yeah. No, Absolutely. Because totally. I've had I've had a few experiences where men have, where I have pushed back and men have gotten to my face and I have felt scared and I have felt like this could turn. Uh, but now... Come, come on, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> <Not> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's you. see. Okay. So on those, so let's do something more positive. So um, when you think about your childhood, what is like a favorite childhood memory in terms of like you and your family? When you look back. Yeah, I, I love German. Come at, <laughs> come at me. <laughs> yeah, come at me. Yes, Max. I love that. Exactly. Yeah, try. Exactly. Um, I really enjoy, like, going to Coney Island Beach. Oh, uh, you got to go to Coney Island Beach. Yes, so spending cool. the summer. I've only ever seen it in the movies. No, it was really fun. Um, we had, um, there was a community of Hondureños and other Central Americans, but mostly Hondureños, who, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how they did this, but all the men somehow got a soccer league together. And oh. every Saturday there were soccer games in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Very cool. Yeah. And we would go, it was like a thing. Every Saturday after we cleaned the house, we would, <laughs> or the apartment. <laughs> it was always a day for clean. Ours was Friday because mom wanted a clean house for the weekend. Okay, no, Saturday Saturday. Morning. I, I dreaded Friday, so I'm like, oh, this is the day we clean the house. <laughs> Saturday morning, no sleeping in, we're cleaning, yeah. and then we're going to Red Hook to watch soccer games from, like, noon to, like, 8 at night. Um, wow. But the, the, the cleaning cool always thing, first. <laughs> cleaning always first, of course. Um, yeah. The cool thing was that there were um, vendors, like mom and pop little with their little carts selling mm -hmm. pupusas selling baleadas ma mangoes on a stick just oh, you know like it. you had all of yes. that yes you had all Ooh. of that like honduran stuff that you could eat and that yeah and the chancla if not and, the chancla uh, yes yes and that was a <laughs> fantastic memory and then we had a pool right next to the the soccer courts and we'd go do that um, the trips to Honduras were amazing. I cannot, I'm so grateful that my mom, I don't know how she did it, but managed to send me to Honduras multiple times. And that's how I connected with the culture, you know? That's yeah. how my, my Spanish improved. She, she would leave me there by myself. I think she did that twice. Wow. So I had to, nobody could translate for me. So I had to, like, mm -hmm. figure it out. And uh, yeah. it was really, really nice. See, that didn't happen to me until I was um, graduating high school um, and, and spent a summer um, with acquaintances of my dad's business partner to learn Spanish. Um, and it was a tri it was rough because then I got really sick. I ate some really bad chicken and <laughs> lost a lot of weight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this happened to you yeah. in Mexico? In my, my first time, and I was there for like three months. We went to um, like a banquet. Uh -huh. It was like, you know, uh, one of those organizations, and um, and I could tell I had chicken breast. I could tell it was pink inside. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was never so homesick in my life. <laughs> I, I think that's so funny because the first time I went to Honduras, nobody told me this. So we spent the afternoon climbing trees, which you don't do in New York, and getting <laughs> mangoes. And they were all green. Oh, and wow. They gave me, they were like, oh, yeah, you can eat a green mango. It's okay. And I, nobody was watching me. I sat with a bucket full of green mangoes, and I ate them all by myself. And I got so sick afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I could not look at a mango. I was like, oh, get that away from me. <laughs> oh, funny. Can you go no. near a mango now? Oh, I, they, I love mangoes. Yeah, okay. no, okay, not good. stop me. Um, but I, I wonder now if it was like a type of hazing, you know, like, <laughs> let's see if the Americana can, can handle a mango. Exactly. <laughs> I should ask. Oh, see, my Claudia saying mangoes, mangoes verdes son los mejores. 
Yeah, so I do stay away from mango verdes. I like them right. <laughs> I think I learned my lesson, but yeah. <laughs> oh my, my dad did that, but with avocados. He went to an avocado farm in Mexico and ate them like off the tree and ate them so much that after that, he never touched avocado ever again. <laughs> he wanted no part of it. <laughs> I honestly, now that we're talking, I'm going to ask my, my cousins. And <laughs> yeah, you was guys that, that on purpose? Was that amazing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, lots of, lots of great childhood memories. I think um, I hadn't thought about this in this way until um, you had proposed it. But um, when in New York, when I was growing up, and I don't know if I made it all the way out here to the south, but – did freestyle music make it out here? Freestyle, like hip hop, like uh, like uh, dancing. No, it's uh, like like dance pop music. It was predominantly yeah. black and Latino, and that really to see people that look like you singing and dancing. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't make the top forty, but in New York, it was everywhere. It was the soundtrack yeah. of our lives, um, yeah. and so that was really awesome to have. We saw it, you know, more through the films and stuff, but I remember in uh, high school, especially in the early 90s, there is this shift, and the students are embracing hip-hop, they're embracing, um, you know, different types of music from versus the 80s type of pop. Yeah. 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 I, I think that that was also, also made my, my childhood really great. I, a couple of weeks ago, somebody did a like a throwback on Instagram and they were playing all of that, all of that music from the eighties and nineties. Yes. And I was like, Oh man, I had such great memories. And it's like, you never think about that, but mu the music mm -hmm. really takes you there. Really does. That's for me. That's my trigger for memory is music. That's yeah. how, and in fact, I, I, I didn't even realize I do it, but now I'm more aware of it. Every time I would travel, I would buy a new piece of music, an album, or I'd load up new music that was popular. And that became the, the playlist for that trip. Yeah. So like I was in uh, Denmark waiting to, I was working in Sweden at the time and I bought JLo's um, CD. Um, the um, no, the, the second one. Oh, the, second the other one. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when she was with uh, P Diddy at the time, okay. he had my love. Yes. You know, and I had my, my disc man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? And so now whenever I hear her music from, from that album, I'm immediately back to early 2000s and traveling, and it's just me and my music, you know, this Latina in a freezing cold tundra of a world. <laughs> but you have that, that, that um, I don't know, our music is just, mm -hmm. it moves me in a way that other music just doesn't. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Get them. And, and speaking of, you know, can I tell you, my time in Scandinavia, they were actually fascinated, but in a positive way, about Latinx culture. And, I mean, I was cleaning up with the guys, too. I mean, <laughs> they were sick of tall, blonde women. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> and there the women are kind of more dominant, more aggressive. Yes. And so the Swedish guys were very shy. It, after a couple of drinks, they'd kind of come out of their shell. And for yeah. me, it was refreshing. They weren't just so, like all this, you know, machismo coming at me. It was just more of a gradual get to know you, and they're curious. Um, and so, if anything, that experience helped me to kind of celebrate my background and not feel ashamed or not having to, well, let me explain where I'm from, and let me explain that. Yeah. They genuinely were just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's, it's um, right now that you say that, I feel right now just so like rooted in my latinx identity mm -hmm. it feels so good yes. um and and i'm you know it's not perfect obviously and we could talk about that and all the things that need to change but it feels really good when i think back on it's just i wouldn't want it any other way um yes. just really really orgullosa mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah. the thing i want to bring to especially to the ala students so many of them have backgrounds like mine or they have backgrounds like yours where they, they have language or they don't have language or they were removed from their culture. And just to be able to re-engage and embrace and have that pride. Yes. Uh, that when I, especially when we would do like the, the fundraisers and stuff and they are actively wanting to sell and wanting to explain stuff and have become representation representatives of the, the beauty of our culture. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, you said your theme was like radical kindness. Yes. That that is one of the ultimate things that you can do to like sit down and th really think about like, why do I feel ashamed? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel othered? For me, it really, it wasn't something from me. It was the way I was perceived and the, yes. it was an outside element to it. And I just, once I, once that clicked for me, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't have to, no, 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 no. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I sit in my history, good and bad. And I need to, I need to know that. Yes. Um, but I can be, I can be proud of who I am. And whatever opinions other people have about whether or not I'm Latina enough or whatever it is, um, we can have a conversation about that. But Absolutely. that's not going to change who I am at my core. Because um, carrying that shame or that, that doubt or that just that conflict is going to wear on you. Yes. Um, so you, In fact, you, you even beautifully called, called that on me because I'm always apologizing for my Spanish yeah, and my no. accent and not being fluent. And you're like, why are you doing that? And I was like, it took me a minute to like, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of self, like, flagellating myself. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. And when my cousins make fun of me, I'm like, well, I don't make fun of you guys. Exactly. So make fun of me or, or, <laughs> and they do it lovingly. You know, they're not, yeah. not, you know, mean or anything like that. It's really not my cousins. It's really my dad. <laughs> I got to talk to him about that. When but I then it's all about the comeback too and, I, and that's how I learned to fight back and I learned that from my dad that when people are going to make a comment believe me they have a soft underbelly as well and especially in the 90s when you're working with predominantly males predominantly white males in a computer field and they're going to make comments um, I actually learned this from Shirley MacLaine the actress she's like the one thing that men fear more than rejection is being made fun of Yeah, and, I, and that again not to generalize all men but I actually tried that, and there's something to be said. When you push back and you hit no, I their agree. insecurity, I agree. then it's like, yeah, what else do you have to say about me and yeah. I? No, yeah. I totally get it. I totally get that. What's Claudia saying? My cousin. Oh, she says my cousin make fun of my English and what? They mess up their Spanish, too. Exactly. <laughs> but at least she's here, and she's trying, and she's improving, and. Oh, yeah. Claudia, you know. Claudia is amazing. Um, she's going to rule the world. She's she is. Claudia she is. is going to. I'm and excited that, to see where she goes. Yeah. And the Alas group is just so, um, it's so rich. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you guys do so much. I think that there's, um, again, we just try. another. Oh, witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft. It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, you know, it's, it's, uh. It's it's uh, beautiful to see that the student, because after seeing the video, especially when they were like, we want to reconnect with our heritage. And I'm like, oh, yes, you're perfect just the way you are. And you're let you know, you're Latino yeah. just the way you are. Yes, yes, reconnect. But don't let anyone make you feel like, you know, mm -hmm. like you're like you're not enough. Yeah. And they do. And I'm like, they're echoing what I used to feel as well. Like I wasn't enough and I'm not of my heritage and I don't have the language and um, I remember the first time a student admitted to me yeah I signed up for your class because your last name said Navarro on it I didn't even realize that that would be a factor in why you would take my class over someone else but now I celebrate that I'm like if you see it, if that's what brings you to me if that's what brings you to the door then please yeah. come in you know yeah. that's not a that shouldn't be a negative to judge people by their names yes um, no I so that I that too yeah. I don't think I've ever had a Latino professor. Yeah, I I didn't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a Latino professor. I had an amazing Pakistani professor, anthropologist, mm -hmm. and Stony Brook, she's now at NYU. Amazing um, to have somebody like that. And really, when I came out here to Texas, to see this many uh, lat professional Latinos, Mm -hmm. um, was very, like, just the sheer number. Yeah. To see so many names, um, mm -hmm. it was a juxtaposition to, like, I'm mostly working with immigrant communities, you know, who are just starting. And now I'm here seeing the other end where people are, like, you know, all these lawyers and all these, you know, 
And it just, it blew me away. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. look at this, you know? Not to say that there aren't professionals in New York, but New York is so dense and so diverse that sometimes it's, it's just to see them here all in one space. It's, it's like, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is shocking. Um, exactly, exactly. I see Let's see. Uh, I saw a comment from Lola. She says, I've always felt the same thing because my father was from Mexico, but my last name was, uh, my senior, we are cool. Uh -huh. So if people judge me on that, they'd never know I was Mexican. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I hadn't thought, yeah. And, and I have that, students too that will have a, a like an Anglo last name, but they're like, no, I grew up, you know, Salvadorian, I grew up this, I grew up that, you know. And again, speaking to, I think even us Latinos, we need to really, um, how can I put this? We, we also need to understand the diversity within our own community. Mm -hmm. Because we tend to, like, have tunnel vision and yes. just, like, focus on, like, our experience in a certain, you know, mm -hmm. moment in time and community. And it's like, no, it's, we're much broader. Um, I stacked up. I, I went and I got a whole bunch of history books. I will be asking you questions later, Michelle. Okay. Uh, sure. Because I, you know, one thing that I did learn as moving from New York, coming from such a, a diverse uh, community of Latinos, then you, you come to the South and I'm like, people don't know that I'm Latina or they don't expect me to speak Spanish or they've never heard the name mm -hmm. Celaya. Uh, just, it just proves to me that, and I'm getting that from people of color and white people. So I'm like, you know what? I think we need to know our history. And I think once we know our history, then I think we can like speak more to why you're confused about wh who I am and my last name. Things. And honestly, that's that's where I started my journey as an undergraduate. I took a Mexican history class. I generally knew nothing other yeah. than maybe a little bit about Aztec culture, a little bit about Mayan, but nada. Yes. And it, it was actually an old uh, white male, yeah. uh, Dr. Chipman, I'll never forget him, but he had such a love for the culture. Yes. Um, and would just teach it with this enthusiasm and often went to Mexico. But yeah, it would have been a whole different experience if it had been a, a Latinx professor teaching me about culture and but that was not there at the time yeah so yeah absolutely but i'm with you it, the judging the judging oh that a, a latina looks a certain way no we mm -hmm. look all kinds of ways yes. um and then again just the judging it just can we stop that can we get curious instead although i i, I will admit i am struggling with the latinos that favor trump on I'm, I'm struggling with that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen some videos online. Um, I'm just like, but, but why? No. But, <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm kind of like, let me get curious, I think, mm -hmm. just to see. But I think that we have to be careful. Yes. You know, if you want to support Trump, okay, like, it's your right to do that. But yes. I think, are we being racist? Uh, is mm -hmm. it, are the reasons why we support whichever candidate, where are they really coming from? Uh, because we ourselves could be racist, and we cannot, we cannot uh, do to each other as Latinos what um, a white or European-centric European -centric system does to us, a racist system does to us. And, and I, I had a, a lady that we, uh, my partner and I pushed back on, really, it was just they didn't have all the information, they didn't have the history they were saying things like, oh, we're going to be a communist nation, we're going to be socialist. I'm like, um, no, Bill of Rights, Ninth Amendment, yes. you know. So, all right, well, I'm getting the countdown time. We have one minute left. So I, oh I, I know, it just like flew by. <laughs> so I, I want to take a moment to really thank you for, for stepping thank out of your comfort you. zone for doing this. Um, I know the students had one last quick question. Um, what do you do in your spare time? What do you like to do for fun or in your free time? Do you have a favorite dish you your go to? No, it's yoga and meditation. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and you're working on getting your yoga li uh, license. I already right? I already got my certificate. So at Yay! Point, we need to do yoga together. <laughs> but let me see this. Yes, yes. I would love um, when we do like a Day of the Dead ceremony, we can maybe do something to honor them. So. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, gracias for everything. Thank you for supporting no, us. Thank you for being you. on here. Thank you. I love all that. Yes. And we yeah. love you and your students and, love you. And yes. Yay. Ditto. Love you, Michelle. And <laughs> Bye, Claudia. Yes.
All righty. Well, I'll see you. We'll be in touch soon. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Okay. Bye.